are recording. Hi, kittens. Hi, everybody. All right. <clears throat> uh, let's see. I got to settle down here, check the camera angles, make sure the mic's working. Little Bill, you got to come with me too, buddy. Come on, Bill. All right. Hey, don't worry about it, guys. I'll pick up the bill. Oh, oh yeah. It's never going to end. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's see. I'm going to sit right over here. Yep, like that, I think. Hi, kids. Bill, you can sit right down in here, okay, if you want. There you go. And let's see. Oh, man. Uh, okay, uh, where did I put my phone? There we go. Kittens, these kittens have been yelling at the door all morning. Except Bill. Bill's just been taking a nap because I guess he's just cool like that. But everybody else has been like, I would like to go out now and run around the house and meet all the other kittens. Uh, which they do really want to do. They go out the door, they start meeting all the other kittens, they're loving it, the other kittens are hating it, so that's why we haven't been doing more of it. Um, but they, these kids have a lot of fun with it. A couple of them ran, oh, what's with the little cor coral tail, buddy? Look at that, yeah, okay, okay, put up the antenna. Uh, hang on a second now. Um, anyway, a couple of them ran all the way down the hall to my office and got to see their mom this morning, and she was actually cool with it. I'm like, yesterday, when she was feeling a little bit, like, uh, over it. Okay, where am I? Um, mm -hmm, audio good, 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 okay. And, all right, I guess the angle's not too bad. The light's a little bit, you know, I think I can actually improve the light quite a bit if I just turn off that lamp back there behind me. Let's see here. Where is that? Oh, yeah, that does look a little better, doesn't it? And I can get us a little more light if I turn on. There we go. Yeah, that's it. That's a good improvement. All right, so that's about what I got. Um... Cool. Well, aside from uh, little Bill here being our newest kid at the Academy, uh, there's no other real news this week. We're still looking for adopters for the older kids. Uh, we got mailbag here to go through. There's not going to be a ton. I think it'll go pretty quickly. Uh, although the, I think there's a couple curveballs in here potentially, so we'll see. And then um, I think uh, DJ has planned another day out for us this weekend. She's really making an effort to try to get me to leave the house a little more often, which is good. I think it's it's very well-intentioned. It's the right thing. So I'm supposed to go out with her this afternoon, uh, so it'll probably be a little quiet around here, at least from the people angle, but you'll be, still be able to keep an eye on these kittens for us. All right, well, I guess that's about that. All right, let's see what we got here for letters. And uh, if I think of anything else as we're going, then we'll just get into it as we go. Okay. I had one coffee this morning, but I felt like I really needed a lot of caffeine and stuff. So I've already switched to a Diet Coke here, which I'm sure will open in due time. All right, what else have we got in here? Well, maybe I can check the camera angles before we get rolling, too, just to make sure. We could have a nice uh, extra bonus angle here today, potentially. Hang on, one more second. Oh, yeah, that bonus angle could just be looking at my bald spot, which is my entire head. It's a big spot. Um, <laughs> well... I don't know. On second thought, maybe where I sat is not the best for it, but that's fine. Hey, buddy. Hey, is that a product endorsement, Bill? You know we're not getting paid enough for that, right? Here, why don't you try it? And turn it this way, and then we'll get the most out of it. And somebody can post it to Coke and be like, hey, these guys need a product endorsement. You do what you were doing a second ago? All right, where were we? Uh, huh. Oh my goodness, these cameras are so old and loud. Someday I'd like to replace them all with the new style cameras uh, that we started using around here. Okie dokie. Um, no, I'm not doing that. I'm doing this right here. Hi, buddy. Okay, here we go. So, 
Wow, this has got a really cool, oh, Robin Hood made Mary and Mary stamp on it. How cool is that? Hmm. Buddy, you want to come sit in my lap? All right. Oh, well, look at this. We got letters in letters. Oh, personal, not for reading. Okay, good. Well, see, look at that. I can pay attention to the rules. I'll put that over here for now. But I recognize the rest of this pretty well. Oh, and uh, hopefully that camera behind me is not on. Just a giant address right here. And it says, Dear Mr. A. Here, let me do this. Uh, that makes me feel better. Dear Mr. A and DJ and all the furries. Just a wee note to enclose two copies of a poem I've written for Till. One copy is, of course, for the Academy, and one is for Till and her adutive family. Till has been a devoted and loving mother to her kittens, and each member of this exquisite furry family has left an indelible paw print on my heart. In a world that's not always what it could and should be, Kitten Academy is an oasis of kindness, not only toward the kitties, but also for we humans, as witnessed by the continuance of what has long been a worldwide KA community. It is always heartwarming to watch the weekly mailbags and see the many gifts that are sent for the kitties. From hand-knitted and embroidered blankets to cozy marshmallow beds, catnip-filled bananas, and so much more, the thoughtfulness and commitment shown to each and every cat and kitten is truly amazing. Maybe I should have taken this out before I started reading. Yep, yep, I heard uh, Okay. I dearly wish that every cat and kitten, wherever they are in the world, could be blessed with the kindness, safety, and love that KA affords its furry charges, fosters, and faculty alike. Thank you to the Academy's humans for all you continue to do for cats and kittens, and by extension, for we humans too. With lots of love and best wishes from Joanne, your greatest Scottish fan. And here we have our poem for Till, uh, Till Forever, Now and Forever you're ensconced in my heart, and I know that's where you'll remain. I've loved you, my pretty, from that very first glimpse when to the prestigious academy you came. Now and forever you'll dwell in my thoughts as each night follows each day, and you'll know that from afar much love is sent out from a Scot who wishes that health and happiness will be your stay. Now and forever, I wish you and your kittens the best as your academy studies you complete. And I'll remember with fondness a mother cat and her kittens, each one a furry miracle, and oh, so very sweet. That's so sweet. Uh, written for Till by Joanne. Thank you very, very much. Joanne, that is uh, just wonderful. As always, I'm sure the adopters really appreciate these poems that we put uh, in the endowments. And this will be no exception. Uh, I'm going to put it in this plastic wrap. I'm not going to try to get it in there the right way because that will take me all day long. So <laughs> put that right over there. Uh, and this I need to put somewhere so I remember to take a look at it later. Uh, so for now, I guess I'll just set it right here, I suppose. There we go. Okay, one more note. Here we go. It is, well, there's a tiny little pink purple kitty on there. And it says, okay to read on stream. So that's good. What are you looking at there, Bill? So cute. Oh, we got a newspaper in here. I like that. From Victoria, B.C., huh? The James Bay... Be oh, these are cool stickers, too. All right, cool. The James Bay Beacon. Our community newspaper since 1992. Dreams in pink and white. Oh, wow. Are those rose petals? Uh, not rose. What am I saying? Cherry is what I meant. There we go. Cherry. Very pretty. Well, uh, so James Bay Beacon. And look at these awesome space rocket stickers. They're like retro rockets. That's right. Fire those retro rockets. Um... Not that kind of retro rocket, but I've been meaning to write for months, but 2023 got off to a bumpy start. And before I knew it, here we are going into September. It's been lovely, as usual, to see all the comings and goings at Kitten Academy. Your dedication to hand rearing um, Wellingtons and Squall has been inspiring to watch. I'm glad the petty cash have been so much less labor intensive. Till's been a great mom, and those babies are so adorable, I'm amazed you haven't had a cutonium overdose by now. 
Watching DJ coach Till through her delivery was a great glimpse into what a reassuring and comforting presence she must be when she's dealing with medical emergencies. No wonder if it was one of your shortest deliveries on record. If she ever wants to switch specialties, I'm sure she'd be a wonderful obstetrician helping uh, human moms deliver little people. Here in Canada, we have garage sales rather than tag sales. Yeah, same where I grew up uh, in the Midwest. A tag sale implies putting tags on family heirlooms and arranging everything nicely so the item looks pretty and you get a good price for them, while a garage sale is a way to get rid of everything you don't want after culling all your stuff. Then, assuming the garage is empty and has space in it, you put tables in your garage and driveway slap, price stickers on all that stuff, and get up uh, early on the day of the sale because early birds always show up before the posted opening time, hoping to find a gem amongst the general purpose items. I'm sure a tag sale is just a fancy name for the exact same thing. I've included a couple of sheets of stickers to make sure none of those tween girls get ahead of you in the sticker collecting contest. I thought some of the kittens looked a lot like the utensils. Oh, is there kittens too? Uh, I guess those will turn up. They must be in here somewhere. Uh, maybe. There's also a couple things to read. Excuse me. In your spare time, I realize you seldom actually have any spare time between feeding, doing litter box training, cleaning up after, and keeping track of your house full of sweet felines. Thank you for continuing to provide such a happy place to retreat to, especially when things can be a bit overwhelming. Best wishes and ramble on. Paula in Victoria. And then we have 25 reasons to love Victoria. Very cool. Uh, really a neat little, um, I guess it's a magazine excerpt. I will take a look at that as well. So thank you so much, Paula and Victoria. I love these stamps. I love the James Bay uh, Beacon. I'm excited to read all of that. I'll put that here with the other stuff I have to read. Hi, buddy. Can I take that? Thank you very much. And those little uh, rocket ship stickers are super cool. So, all right, let's make sure I didn't miss anything in here, just to be safe. Oh, there is another sheet of stickers. What do you know? Ooh, and it's shiny kitties. Wow, they're very sparkly. Uh, <laughs> very cute. All right, thank you so much. I'm glad you mentioned them. I might not have noticed right away. Usually I notice these things, uh, we go through everything a second time as it goes out for the recycling, and I'm, you know, crushing the boxes and stuff. So it's, I think it's very rare that anything gets completely missed. Hi, cute. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry to interrupt mailbag, but there's just too much cuteness right here. Mm. I need to open this too, and then we need to pick one of these boxes. I guess we'll just start with the big box, and that way maybe we have something to put things into. What do you think? All right, uh, let's see if this sounds terrible on the microphone. I'm going to mute it, actually. It'll be, it'll be, uh... I think that was muted? I hope. I don't know. Let me check. Make sure we're cool. All right. Uh, no, I guess we're good. So let's... Hi. What is going on right here? What's going on right there? Are you peeing on a bag? Are you peeing on a mail bag? Oh my goodness, buddy. No, no, no. I know. It probably feels like a litter box and it's way easier to get into than the real one. Been a while since we've had that happen. Um, let me grab a paper towel real quick just so I don't drop that on the floor. It peed right on one of the little plastic mailing bags. Bill just peed on a mail bag. Uh, like an actual mail. Oh man, that's bright yellow too, buddy. You need to drink a little more water maybe, huh? Okay. All right, not your fault, Bill. I know, I know. You can't know the difference. I'm actually impressed with how well he's... Oh, hey, buddy. I'm impressed with how well he's done at using the litter box, considering he has to really climb to get up into it. But he, he makes the effort. He, he puts in the effort. So that's just some legitimate confusion there about what this, all this crinkly plastic is for. It's nice and it's soft, and it's probably a lot like a litter box, as far as he's concerned. Can't blame him for that one. All right, where was I? 
I was about to open this big box, I think. Before Bill got us a little off track there. Ooh. Oh, well, I know not only what this is, but a glance tells me who it's from, too. I bet you guys can already guess as well. Let's see what the note says. Well, the note says a gift for you. Enjoy your gift. <laughs> Maybe there's a second note, but I'm guessing this is from Tahini and Flair. Uh, there may not be a second note, actually. I think it's a real safe bet. Uh, or the notes, you know, sometimes the notes get stuck in... Sometimes the notes get kind of like stuck in these things, um, but I'm not seeing it. So that could be it. Maybe we didn't leave a note. Maybe we don't even need a note. You know, we don't, we don't stand on formality here. Uh, I'm assuming it's Tahini and Flair, and the only reason that a note is good is so that uh, if I, I'm wrong, nobody gets upset. But that seems like a pretty safe bet, doesn't it? So uh, we'll go with that, Tahini, Flair. Thank you guys so much. I'm glad you continue to use that credit card. Probably looks like the ones that we got in the mailbag from the B&B sisters last week. Okay. A whole bunch of fun tubes, and the fun tubes note says, Here we are, petty cash kittens. We hope you enjoy some of our favorite toys. Your ball towers will be arriving without our message. All right. Well, you know, it came in the wrong order, but now everything makes sense. Love, Tahini and Flair. So thank you so much. I'm glad we got closure on that. And uh, thank you so much for for the wonderful ball towers and for the fun tubes. Um, they're going to enjoy all that stuff. Those ball towers have been uh, just, you know, a continual all cats seem to like them. But we've had some kittens in lately that seem to like them even more than most We've had some classes where, um, you know, no matter how much I play with the ball tower, they're always just running away from it, uh, or just not interested so much. And these guys are all very interested. They love it. And they've even gotten to the point where yesterday I could shake it up and they wouldn't even run away. I, I don't know, though, if they really learned that lesson. Hi, buddy. You just stand right in front of the camera for me to prove this to everybody, huh? Quitty? 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 Hi, bud. Okay, I'm going to shake this up now. All right, are you guys going to run away? Or do you remember yesterday when it was okay? Here we go. He doesn't even mind me putting it down right next to him, does he? Oh, very interesting. And then, of course, Little Teaspoon is still a huge fan of the ball track. Uh, I didn't get the door all the way closed, and I think we're about to get a kitten that's going to jump on the door and open it. No? Okay, good. He didn't jump on it. Lucky me. Uh, all right. Well, you guys can play with that. And I will keep going over here. Thank you again. Um, okay, this just says Kitten Academy on the outside. Oh, this is the P package? Yes, this is the P package. So, we have Tamu-style cat spring toys. Huh. I'm sure these are the same springs we always see, but I have not seen this packaging before. And that's a big box for springs. Oh, it's a lot of springs in there. I mean, a lot of springs in there. Wow. How many is in one of these? Got 100? 60. 60. 60 springs in a box. All right, so that's 120 springs right there. And a marshmallow bed. I'm guessing this could even be from Tahini and Flair once again, because this is also stuff they always send. Is there a note to tell us? Um, yes, there is. Yes, there is. Dear Petty Cash Kittens, we hope you enjoy bat batting around and losing our very favorite springs. There are plenty for your adopters to find. <laughs> Love, Tahini and Flair. So sweet. Uh, dear Till, we hope you enjoy this comfy bed when you arrive at your forever home. It's our favorite bed, except for the human bed. Love, Tahini and Flair. So sweet. Um, yeah, I don't I don't know if she's going to be a marshmallow bed kitty or not. She does like to sit on soft things. Um, she doesn't sleep on the bare floor as much as she sleeps on the cat tree. Or um, I've got a, an ottoman in uh, my office that she likes to sit on sometimes. 
Or uh, she likes to sit on my desk, of course, when she wants attention. Uh, but I don't know about the... I guess we'll find out. You know, it's, it's something she'll grow to love, I'm sure. But she does like the soft things, so I feel like she's already, you know, uh, partway there. Just hasn't specifically been down the marshmallow bed route yet. And won't this color look great for her? I think you almost always send a purple one, right? But this is going to look real good on a uh, little chili beans. So, excellent. All right. Uh, Tahimi, Flair, thank you so much for helping take care of the kittens. I really appreciate it. You guys have uh, just been uh, model alumni looking out for the next generation for so long. Very kind of you. All right. Let's see here. It's not really paying it forward as much as it's paying it back, right? I don't... That sounds weird when you say that. This says, no knife guard, so open carefully <laughs> like that. Somebody knows... Uh, they know me. A little too well there. All right, yep. So what do we got here? This looks like some tissue paper. Ooh, well, it is some tissue paper. All right, correctly identified. Oh, there's some stuff, like, tucked in it, though. We have the note and card. And something else wrapped up in here. Okay, feels round like a like a cat tunnel or something. And the snack sticks. Ooh, that's a cute little kitty. And dreamies. And a fun tube. Hey kids, do you want a fun tube? You don't have a fun tube. <gasps> you don't have a fun tube. You want one right now? One fun tube? Wow, it's a very bright yellow fun tube also. That's going to be a big hit soon enough. Oh, I think maybe you sent those for specific cats, though. And the reason I say that, maybe we're going to get into the note in the fun tubes for somebody because I see you also sent some hair ties, and we know who those are almost always for. And some little tiny fuzzy mice. All right, let's read your beautiful note. It's got this lovely cat sticker on it, and the cat has a like almost a hairdo made up of flowers and these big hipster glasses. And it says... Stickers from Philly Mouse. Oh, how cool. All right. Oh, oh, ooh. Wow, and an extra, extra fancy Mylar ball. It's not even made from Mylar. That's how fancy it is. It's not entirely. This is backed with something. Hmm. I don't even know what this material is. Okay, hang on, though. We got to get into the note. Oh, another cat with glasses. All right, I see a theme here. And inside it says, Hi, Mr. A and DJ. Thank you so much for all you do. I'm glad you got some, uh, got a gamecation. Oh, yeah, I like that. I made a special gift for K8. It's one of my first embroidery tries. Don't show the back. Uh, it's a joint collaboration with me uh, embroidering and Cloudberry Lena on Discord making the text pattern. I hope it makes it there. Now, so this must be an embroidery hoop that felt like a tunnel to me. I'm excited to see this. Um, don't show the back. That's cute. I hope it makes it there uh, soon. Also, gifts for faculty. I see. Yes, as I guessed. Hair ties for custard. Fun tube for Loganberry. A uh, mouse for Maggie, a mouse for Eddie. I see, they've got colors. The white one is for uh, Maggie, the gray one for Eddie, the black one, and some pets for Ari. A sparkle ball for the petty cash, perfect. Tissue paper uh, and snacks for how you see fit. Love and purrs for Rum, a uh, Norway cat fan. Sorry for the bad handwriting. Don't worry about it. I was perfectly readable. Uh, so thank you so much for everything. All right. Uh, the fun tube is ooh, uh, for uh, Loganberry, you said. And I know he, I'll give him a different fun tube because these kids, this is right here. I'll make sure he gets one. Oh, and uh, I'll tell him it was from you. All right. But for the rest of this, uh, let's see, we're going to put the snacks. Actually, I'm going to put all this right here so it goes downstairs and we'll sort that out when it gets to it. But this, I'm, this is the real, I got to see this. We got to. Get everything out of the way so we can take a look right here at this. Okay. You said this was your first time doing embroidery? Alright. Okay, the suspense. It's building. 
Oh my gosh, I can see what it is. That's so beautiful. Oh my goodness, it's wonderful. That's just great. It says soon. It's a um, it's a little tiny tuxy kitty with beautiful green eyes and little pink uh, fur in his uh, ears. Little pink ears, I guess, with some fur in them, I should say. And a little pink nose, and he's just barely looking around the edge of the embroidery ring. Uh, like I said, it says soon. Very cute font. Little cross stitch, uh, mostly cross stitch work, I guess. Right? What is the uh, Wow, that's some really uh, dense work there on the face, though. That's wonderful. That's some really good work. Much better than anything I've ever done. And then my favorite, maybe, part of the whole thing is this little detail under the O in soon is a little tiny fish, which is just super cute. Uh, sets it off a little bit. The whole thing is, is completely adorable. And that's, that's fantastic work. Okay, I'm going to look at the back. I won't show anybody else. Oh, what are you talking about? That looks great. Yeah, that looks fantastic. You know what it reminds me of uh, looking at the back there is um, I used to have uh, my first... All right. Uh, I'm not going to get too far into it. My very first oscilloscope was uh, a really old, like, used oscilloscope that I got off of, like, a garage sale, speaking of, for... I think it was a flea market for, like... I don't remember. It was still really expensive uh, back then for me anyway. I just remember that thinking, oh, I don't know if I can afford this, but I was going to do it anyway. And uh, that's neither here nor there. The The point that I was going to get to, though, is that uh, it wasn't working either when I got it and I had to fix it. And so I would open it up. If only I had an oscilloscope to try to figure out the problem. Uh, no, that's not the story. Uh, I'd open it up and inside, I, I'm sure you can Google for this kind of thing and find all kinds of wonderful examples, but I'd never seen anything like it at that point in my life inside this, this old, old oscilloscope. The, the circuit board was not, uh, it was not a circuit board like all the ones that you see today that were designed using a CAD software and, you know, all the straight lines with the exact same size, you know, etchings and 90 degree angles and like three layers of, you know, they, of, of things that are all etched by machine, you know, real thing. You know what a circuit board looks like. You just picture a circuit board in your head and you see that. That's not what this looked like. It was a printed circuit board, just like, you know, the ones that you're thinking of. But instead of being designed by a machine and, and you know, straight lines, it had been very obviously hand laid out and the paths, you know, the tracings, the little wires on the circuit board, the little lines on the circuit board that the electricity travels on weren't all straight lines or uniform size. They were curved and they were, they, some of them were wider and they would get wider and they were just, it was like art. It was really beautiful where all these, you know, somebody, whoever had designed it had to do it by hand because that's the only way they did it back then and didn't just design it to take the electricity from here to there, but also to look appealing. You know, like I said, with these curves and swirls and, and just really all made out of the copper that the electricity travels on, you know. Uh, and on top of all of that, then, he, uh, I think, if I, if I recall right, it was more than one person, a couple of people, but there were, there were also signatures that had been then done in the copper and, and etched in. Uh, it was just It was just some amazing, like, hand worked stuff and and you could just in the detail of it you could see all the love and intricacy that had gone into it and of course in the end it wasn't as complex as what we do now with a machine not by a long shot you know a machine today could probably make that exact same circuit board as you know the size of my thumbnail and we're talking about something that was like this you know like the size of an oscilloscope uh, anyway, my point is that looking at the back of this, it just it looks like that. It looks like uh, or, you know, like this this thing that's been done organically and wonderfully and beautiful. Uh, it's it's lovely, and I don't know where to put it now that I've unwrapped it. I'm just going to set it behind me that way. I know it goes out of here um, uh, and uh, gets put someplace safe and and properly appreciated. It's so pretty. Thank you very very much for that. I really appreciate it. And it's so sweet for you to be doing uh, this new sort of style of expression for the first time and to want to send it to us. Uh, I got to tell you, I really, really appreciate it.
And uh, I really appreciate also how lovely it is. So thank you for that. Okay, here we go. Um, <laughs> I wish I still had that oscilloscope, by the way, as I recall. Uh, as soon as I, I got a, like a modern one that was, you know, faster and had all the digital bells and whistles and stuff, I got rid of it. And uh, I regret it, you know, even if I never used it again, just to have it as a piece of art, I think would have been uh, something. And uh, I don't know where it went, it's probably in a landfill. Somewhere like these things end up. Sadness there. All right, let's see here. Uh, aren't these cute? Look at these little kitty faces on this thing. And they've each got a little open mouth, uh, happy looking expression. We got two packages of them. And it, the note says, we got two notes for these. It says, hi, uh, KA Kittens and Cats. Here are some of our favorite catnip toys to be deployed as you see fit. Thanks for all you do. XXOO from Knitting Kitten, Jimbo, Baba Ganoush, and Stanza. So uh, thank you so much. Wow, uh, that's so sweet of you guys. These are really, really cute. And I um, these we've seen... I've seen a similar set before, but I don't think I've seen this exact set, and I don't think they've ever been sent for us to deploy rather than, <laughs> you gonna bite right through that thing, buddy? Uh, rather than to, to endow. So I don't know how effective they are. I don't know if they've become the favorites of anybody here. Actually, now, now that I think about it, there might have been one set of these that did get deployed some time ago. Uh, oh. These are these might be nicer than I realized too, and they have a little more shape than I remember. These might be a slightly different set. You can feel a little catnip pod in there, so you know there is catnip for sure inside. And uh, speaking of machine embroidery, there's some really cute, like real embroidery on these little faces. Uh, they're very nice. I wanted to put one in here, but it occurs to me, you know, these are little kittens. They don't, they don't care for catnip. So um, I want to take one of these, though, and put it around the academy. And the other one I will put in here for either uh, future deployment or endowment. So thank you so much for all of that. I'm excited to try those out. These kids are mostly flagging, I see. Uh, it's tough to go all the way through a mailbag. Mail bag in. All right. Well, that's fine, because it's not going to be too much longer. And, uh, and we'll be... Well, all right, let's see here. Halify expedited. All right, well, I don't know exactly what that means, but here we have a box in a bag. I guess whatever's in it must need to be extra protected. My knife. It has been so fun. Uh, I just saw Custard's hair ties I put in here. I should probably put them over there. It has been so fun watching Custard start to play again. Now that we've had him on that new medication. I was talking about it a bunch a few months ago when we first started him on it, but we've been keeping up on it. And it's working for him. And I think he, we can tell because we went an extra long time between two doses and we could see he was starting to kind of slow down a little bit again. Uh, so now we got it on the calendar as a regular thing. Um, but it was nice to have that extra sort of confirmation, you know. Um, where was I going with that? I was going to the hair ties, the fact that he's been playing, and... Oh, uh, um, he's been playing a lot with the kittens, which has been extra cool, because not only do the kittens need somebody to play with and a big cat that's going to be friendly with them and a role model who's not just their mom, you know, it sounds so much like I'm talking about human kids when I say that, but I do think that it inevitably has to make some kind of a difference for them to have had some relationship like that with a, a different non-familial cat, right? Just to have had the experience and know that's a possibility. Um, so I think it's really great that they've had some of that with Custard. And that he, he, I think it's even better for him that he gets somebody he can wrestle with that's not going to take offense and start you know, yelling and... Uh, and turned it into a big issue for the entire household. So, uh, so yeah, that's been pretty cool to see. Um, I saw him uh, wrestling with, uh, I've seen him wrestling with Serenity. I saw him wrestling with Wellington. Uh, and I think I saw him wrestling with Raindrop. And I'm sure he does the others as well. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. Oh, okay, this is some kind of tiny little kitten cat scratcher. 
Um, but there wasn't there wasn't a note that I just like discarded on all of my talk, was there? No, there wasn't. There wasn't anything, and there wasn't anything on the outside to indicate. So I don't know who it's from. Um, and so far, I don't even know what it is because we have a collection of what look like uh, some oddly shaped sticks. There we go. And a plastic ball that has uh, had rope glued to it. All right, good. So far, so far, so good. And at the bottom here, a baggie with uh, something clanky in it. All right, some more wooden sticks. Uh, a packet of catnip. And, ooh, a screwdriver and some screws. All right, there we go. Now, uh, you may be asking yourself, did he miss out finding the directions? Uh, I'm asking myself the exact same question. The answer is no, he did not miss it out. There are some words here, but I'm not even going to pretend that I could attempt to pronounce them um, because I couldn't. I couldn't. I couldn't guess what any of these words sound like. Uh, not even by a long shot, but I am going to pull this package back out to make sure I didn't miss anything on it, because this is a little more of a mystery yet uh, than it should be. I can't quite figure out how they go together. Oh, that's right. I said it came from Halify, right? And it says Halify Expedited. Uh, oh, and it says Mishi 60. I covered that part up. I almost missed the fact that I covered up Mishi 60. So, uh, Mishi, thank you for sending us what appears to be a cat toy based puzzle. Uh, I'm excited. I imagine it's sort of like the whale toy, like that's what I'm picturing, but how do we have one ball with a, it's got a pass through for something, yet we have three dowels. Uh, and I can see the dowels just long enough to fit the ball. So that's a good sign. Uh, but then what do you do with the other two? Oh, you know what? I'm getting it. I am getting it. This is going to make a triangle-shaped frame, but then there should be six of them, and there's only four. So you can't have a triangle-shaped frame out of that, can you? Uh, oh, but the other two legs... Okay, wait a minute. Uh, we got two legs that are made up of the dowels, right? Oh my goodness, look at this. I'm going to have to build this thing right now just to solve this. This is fun for me, though. I hope you appreciate that this is fun for me. I can see that these have one side that's shorter and one side that is uh, longer. Hmm. All right, I don't want to take too much away from mailbag, but I think solving this is going to be fun and I can see this is obviously a frame to hold the ball, just like the little whale toy, and we have the screws to put it together. A little catnip. I imagine I could put the catnip in the ball before I put that uh, dowel through it permanently. That would be a fun way to do it. All right, uh, Mishi60, thank you for the puzzle project. That's actually fun. You know, that should be a product that just exists. So I know people like puzzles, and I know there's a big crossover between people who like puzzles and people who like cats. Why not actually make cat like toys that are intended to be a puzzle to construct? Uh, all the more if you put in lots of little, you know, feathers and things for the cats to steal as you are constructing it. Actually, even better than that, you could put the feathers and things on each part and then the cats would steal certain parts and you'd never be able to assemble the whole thing like a puzzle. Hmm. I like this idea. It's uh, awesome and it's slightly cruel. Uh, <laughs> okay, so the notes uh, for these really cool wands, these are, um, oh, Oh, these are even cooler than that. I want to play with this. I really want to play with this. And it says to use as you see fit <gasps> from Smidgen and Spork. Smidgen and Spork, you guys, this is the winner. Um, this this is so cool. So uh, I have a cat wand that I bought that is very much like this. It's a little wand with a long metal, um, uh, instead of a string, it's got a long metal rod that's flexible, uh, and then a little loop on the end of that to attach the toy to. We've seen that before. It's part of my favorite, um, the, the uh, something, fashion talk, fashion's talk kit that we see all the time. I got one right behind me. Um, but that's not what I'm so excited about, even though I am oddly excited about it. There we go. Exactly like this. 
So this is, uh, except I put all these weird toys on the end because I can. Um, this wand is very much, it's the exact same wand as that one, except it's got that one. The new one has a slightly fancier handle on it, um, but that's not where I'm going with this. Uh, the thing that I'm talking about is the fact that I bought some that come with this same wand and uh, have a helicopter sort of design. They've got three feathers that are laid out just right so that when you whip it around, it spins real fast like a crazy helicopter. It's really cool. The cats go nuts for it. And the reason that probably most of you are thinking, well, why haven't I seen that? Is because it is so fragile. The feathers are really long and the spinny part is just crazy attractive to the cats. And the feathers are so delicate that you spin it. If you let them touch it, if they catch it one time, it doesn't work anymore. It's ruined. Um, and uh, I still have some of them completely untouched that I've been saving for that reason because, you know, now at that point they're precious. So, so this I recognize as being an nearly identical uh, design to that. It's got the same wand and it's got the same idea. It is a helicopter. Uh, with a little spinny bit and it's got a clippy so you can clip it onto any wand toy not just the one that they kindly give you with it but you can see the feathers are laid out to make it like a fan so that when I start swinging it around it's gonna spin but uh, they have solved what I think was the one uh, big problem is that the feathers on the other one were too long and too skinny and on this one they are short and fat I'm hoping that means that it can last just a little bit longer before it is a uh, useless feather on a stick, which is not that useless anyway when you're talking about cats. Um, so we shall see, but oh, so exciting. I just, I love that, that spinny toy and so do all the cats. Oh, look at that. I don't know if you guys can appreciate how that thing moves, but it is spinny. There we go. I get a good spin out of it for a second. I need more room. Is the ceiling camera on? Maybe that's what it is. There's a Maggie at the door, and then once again, she doesn't realize that if she just jumped on the door, it would probably pop wide open. So they don't appreciate the fact that it's spinny, um, but I think they appreciate it really uh, just fine as a toy. <laughs> uh, these are great. Okay, so that was, uh, yeah, a bit of an aside there, but my point being um, that this is a fantastic idea for a cat toy, a little... A spinny toy, like a fan, you know, pinwheel thing that's going to spin itself. You can also get uh, other variations on that same kind of idea, and they're all great, and the cats go crazy for them. They go crazy for all kinds of toys on strings like this, or, uh, you know, on wires anyway. But uh, adding that little bit of extra spin to it really takes it to the next level. And you have sent three of those, and I know they're all going to be fantastic. I want to kind of keep the one that we opened out so that I can play with it with them and with the other kittens as well. So I'm going to keep it and put it right here where we have the other. There we go. Those metal wand toys that have the, the metal rod instead of the string are, uh, uh, you know, I guess kind of a mixed bag. There's advantages to either way, but they just never, they never break. You know, they never die. Those, those, and they, they bounce in a way that's really pleasing for the kitties. They give you that extra little bit of motion. They are really nice to have. Okay, moving right along, just a couple boxes left here. Ooh, cat toys. All right, I can guess that this is some kind of a wand, just based on the shape. But I have never seen this package before, and I like it. That's some nice packaging. And the note says... Enjoy your gift from Smidger and Sporky. Smidger and Sporky is so sweet. Uh, and then this one's just got a winky face from Smidger and Sporky. Please deploy one cat toy from Smidgen and Spork. Use others as you see fit. It has a shorter fishing line, perfect for sitting on the floor and playing. See, that's the kind of consideration that I like in uh, picking a cat toy. Uh, some of them do have lines that are too long. Uh, as a good example, uh, that wonderful, oh man, that wonderful fly fishing rig. Um, 
And not only was the rig itself just brilliant, but then um, when the line snapped, which is something that's inevitably going to happen, rather than just having me like retie the line, I seem to recall they sent me an entire other one. Uh, so generous, uh, wonderful people. That, uh, and uh, you will see it out eventually, but that's like I was about to say, one of the reasons that you don't see it more often is, uh, frankly, it's a little unwieldy. You know, it can be nice to have something that's a little more convenient. Ooh, oh, wow. And not only is this the good kind of wand, uh, there's some other toys in here that are new on me. They're all butterflies. And I've never seen these butterflies. Uh, I love new cat toys that I haven't seen before. Oh, and this is so fun. There's a whole bunch of butterflies in here, and they're individually wrapped. Little butterflies, and they're so pretty. <gasps> this is a great toy. These butterflies are so pretty. Oh, wow. Okay, hang on. One more. Look at all these little butterflies. So, and that is a short string. Uh, look at that. They're, each one has, like, I guess a little, I don't know, mylar, cellophane, something, wings, and a bell, and a little loop through the middle to hold the bell. Oh, and a clip. Now, that's extravagant. They could have just put a loop on each of these to save money, but uh, they put a clip on both sides. This has the twisty, quick-release... Um, uh, fishing safety clip uh, on it so you can unclip that and clip it like a safety pin. Uh, these have the even more fancy like carabiner style, style spring-loaded clips on them to clip them to that toy or to anything else that you might want. Anyway, each one is unique. Wow, they're not just unique also in the, uh, the markings. They each have different cuts, shapes of the wings as well. They put a lot of design work into this. You know, I've always had a uh, fantasy of doing a podcast, uh, and if I or uh, you know some sort of a long form uh, video blog or something, and I'm not at all trained in it like the people I enjoy watching who do that, so I should never ever do it. But I daydream about it a lot, and one of the things that I've always wanted to do is a show or something where I hunt down the people who make the design decisions on things like this and find out what they were thinking and, uh, you know, how they got that decision and uh, just, you know, for simple little design elements like that. Like, you know, how did they design these butterflies? And look at these cutouts. Some of these are very, this one here has, uh, what do you call it, like a luna moth that's got those long uh, bits on the end. Like some of these are extremely fancy shapes for these little butterflies. And all different colors. This one's super pretty. Look at all that rainbow color. And each one has a tiny little bell and a tiny little spring-loaded, like, carabiner-style clip on it. Um, and then, of course, the wand, which is a very nice wand. Uh, and, like you said, a very short little string. And one of these little fishing things. I have an entire box in the basement that says, uh, printed on it, says, like, cat toy repair kit or something. I don't remember exactly what I wrote, but my point was it's full of these wands. That and, a, and a line, it's got a, it's like a, got a reel of fishing line, these wands, and a whole box of little fishing tackle like this, just waiting for me to, to reattach all of them so that I can have a whole collection of wands around the house. Uh, all right, so these two are going to go here in the endowment stuff, and this, I just, I really can't wait to play with these cute little butterflies. Oh my gosh, what is wrong with me? I really am like a teenage girl. Uh, <laughs> um... Oh, I just need to pick one. I need to pick a butterfly. Oh, oh, look at this. We got a duplicate. <gasps> there's a duplicate in here. Oh, no, there's another duplicate. Oh, man, you guys probably noticed that before I did. Some of these are duplicate butterflies. Well, now I take it all back. This is the worst set we've ever been given. <sighs> How could you? I'm kidding, of course. Okay, we have one last box. The kittens are sitting on it, and it is addressed to Kitten Academy slash Mr. A... And we're going to move those kittens off of that package using this butterfly, which I've just unpackaged. Oh, I see. So I was I was saying are cellophane. They're not though. They are more like a little thin. Uh, what would it be like a meshy nylony material fabric? And this one at least has two sets of wings on it not just the one set. So it's actually got like four wings or eight, I guess, depending on how you count. I don't know. 
I guess that would be four. There we go. But that does give it a little extra three dimensionality if I push them out like that, doesn't it? So there we go. Now it looks like a butterfly from every angle. Okay, kids, let's check it out. It's tiny. It's such a tiny, oh, little kitten sized butterfly toy. And uh, that's super cute. Well, we got one taker for sure right off the bat. Everybody else is already too tired out. Somebody wants to go for it. Oh, hang in there, buddy. All right. You got it? Oh, I picked one that happens to match the blanket a little well. A little too well, maybe. Bill, you want some? I know you're over there. I can just barely see your ear. Well, that's super, super fun. Thank you so much. What a great set, and uh, what a great wand. And what cute, cute butterfly toys. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Whoop. Right in there. Okay. We'll play that more later, I promise. But we got to open this last thing so I can get myself together. And so we can solve this puzzle. I got to solve this little puzzle toy, too. This is something big. All right. Good job, Amazon. We got a box in a box. Ooh, but it's not just a box in a box. It says it is a pet mansion. Uh, not just a uh, pet, uh, uh, you know, like cube or, or house or something. Pet mansion. And you know what's funny? Um, the, at least the name and description here reminds me of something I was just looking at on Amazon yesterday. Uh, oh, I don't think this is it at all, though. So uh, the note says, here's a see-through tunnel that should work well with the cameras and the kids might really enjoy. Thanks to you and Dr. DJ for all you do. Sincerely, Libby, a.k.a calico underscore mama on discord calico mama on discord uh calico mama on discord thank you so much for the i tent pet mansion uh let's take a look real quick i do love a mesh first off i'm not the only one who loves mesh i will i'll take the blame for it and say i love mesh but the kittens love the mesh there's something so fun for them about being able to see and touch, you know, each other through. So it's better than glass that way, where they can just see each other through, but they can smell and touch, and there's that interaction. Um, but they can't, they can't get through it. You know, it's like this barrier. Um, so that's, that's really, really, I think, stimulating for them. Um, and that's why we love mesh tunnels, but also mesh all kinds of things. We love the mesh pop-up uh, stuff. And, um, you know, for a long time, I was buying mesh, uh, laundry pop-up laundry baskets, the mesh ones that pop up, and just cutting a side out of that and making use of that as a pet tunnel. Uh, and one reason I was doing that is that the only mesh tunnels that were commonly available were the Jackson Galaxy ones, and that was at a time when the manufacturing of them was not so great. I, I think he's turned that around because we've had some recently that were much better. So uh, kudos to you, buddy. This looks like, whoa, okay, uh, this... This is exactly what I was looking at online that I was thinking of. It's these giant outdoor tents. I was going to say this looks like a giant, huge outdoor tunnel and tent. And that's exactly what it is. It is a huge outdoor tunnel and cube. Uh, this is just the one piece of it, the smaller uh, tunnel and cube piece. But it's still huge. So... It might be kind of a tough fit. Oh, look at that. Does this wand look familiar to anybody with the tiny plastic and the metal? Uh, this is this is exactly the wand I just pulled out to show everybody down to the coloring. It's the same white, red, three little balls on it. Uh, it doesn't have the fish, but uh, they sent a bonus anyway, and it's nice. So um, here you can see this is going to be the tunnel and the cube part, and that's a really, I mean, this is so perfect. It is a perfect, perfect, perfect thing. It's a great size. When I use the laundry baskets, they're this size. Oh, and look at that. It comes with uh, um, little zip-on ends so that you, if you have the whole system, it's like I have a trail for cats outside, right? It's this system of connected bits and tunnels and cubes and uh, tents, and you can put them all together and make a big arrangement thing. I do think they're all missing something that I didn't see, which is a window box attachment or a sliding door attachment that can hook into it. Uh, when we had our first, when I had my first cats at the apartment, I, I bought a sliding door thing that you would put 
uh, in the end of your sliding door at your apartment because you didn't want to modify the apartment. And so it would close in the door and it looked just like the end of the door, but it would actually, the door would be open about this much and this much of the door like run would just be uh, like a sheet of metal that matched the frame of the door perfectly white, looks like it belongs. And then at the bottom, an actual cat door fit through it. And that way, if you didn't want to modify your part, you could have a real cat door. And then I would attach to the outside of that. My first homemade cat run was built out of PVC pipes and plastic mesh from Home Depot, tied together with twist ties, as uh, zip ties. Uh, and it worked great um, until the squirrels ate through the plastic. So that's what this reminds me of a lot. And I think they're missing out that piece where it connects to the house, where they, they could sell something like that. Of course, you can MacGyver your own, but if you've spent money on something that is such a nice set like this, they should include a really nice piece to hook it all together too. Most of them show something like people carry, putting it out in the middle of their lawn and carrying their cats out to it in a cat carrier and then putting them in it for a nice day out you know, on the, on the lawn with their cats which I'm sure some people do, but it seems ridiculous. Like the real use of it would be to put it out there and uh, give the cats a way to go in and out, you know? Uh, but probably not just to leave it deployed full time too, because then the squirrels will eat through it like they did with mine and you don't want that. Um, anyway, uh, here's my point. My point is that this is uh, something I was just looking at online. It's brilliant. It's super generous of you to send this because I happen to know uh, that the stuff that they manufacture for this outdoor use is uh, extra pricey for good reason, I'm sure. Um, and well, I'm not going to probably put it in this room for these kids. They're moving downstairs very soon. And this is the perfect size to put into the living room down there with that wall. Uh, you know, where we have the NASA kit. This is actually a very similar size to the NASA set. But uh, obviously it's got even more mesh and it's probably a sturdier mesh too since it's made for the outdoor and uh, it feels that way too. It feels very nice. Like this is going to last a while. So, so cool. Wow. Uh, it's, it's really, it's nice. It's generous. I don't, I don't know what else to say about how wonderful it is. Let's see how big this cube really is. Uh, it's got to be, let's see if we can guess, based on the size of that tunnel be like this tall right like this like way up here i don't even know if it's as tall as the beanbag chair is right now uh obviously not as wide but that it stands up just the same i bet let's find out i don't want to scare anybody by having it pop open unexpectedly fast okay there we go that is a nice cube though and it's all mesh man they're gonna love this oh and I see all three openings in the cube already have the little, I'm going to call it a plug, I guess technically it is, which you can take all the way off. And, you know, I'm not going to do it because I don't, I don't want to yet. But uh, that's pretty generous of whoever uh, made this thing, too. Each zipper has a nice pull on it, uh, a little bit of a, an elastic uh, carabiner cord or whatever you'd call it there. That's, I know the term for this. It's not, and I said elastic, it's not very elastic. It's uh, just a little elastic. Uh, what do you call that? Man, I dabbled in some rock climbing for a while. I had a lot of fun with it. Now I don't remember anything. It's been so long. This is a great, great thing. I just, I can't say thank you enough. And, uh, and beautiful. And yeah, just last night I was looking at these online and thinking uh, how cool it is for people that, that uh, you know, aren't going to sort of try to build their own to have something that they can go out and, and get. And, and it is so nice. Uh, it's really nice. This is, this, is, this is especially nice, really. You can picture that sitting out on the lawn. Uh, a little bit of the high-vis orange outline there looks really cool. And uh, the cat's just enjoying their nice sunny day. Very, very cool. Of course, uh, like I said, we don't need to use it for that. We've got our own little run going already. Uh, but how cool would it be to have something like that and hook it up and, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, let's get all this put away. I don't know if I'm going to sit right here and try to solve that little puzzle or uh, take it with me to my office to solve it. I think I've got it, like I said, mostly solved already. Oh, I can see, huh, I can see the wire that they used for this is exposed a little bit here and it's got some real... Uh, a nice little plastic hardware to finish it to keep it from ever say popping out through the seams that's nice as well common problem for these little tunnels that's usually the first thing that goes is 
whoever designs it puts that wire in. Oh, the, the wire that holds it shape doesn't put a proper end on the wire in the, in the little uh, seam pocket that it fits in. And it busts out. Like, I like an underwire on a bra or something. You know, that's always the first thing to go. And uh, obviously, you know, if you pay more, you get one that's got a little more protection in there and lasts a little bit longer. Because it's not just a piece of wire. All right. Uh, let's see. <laughs> that is really nice. That's iTent brand. I'm sure there's a lot of uh, really great brands out there that do this, though. I saw a number, and what a great stuff. Okay. It might have been the same brand I was looking at, though. I don't know. Put that on top. Okay. Put this over here. Put this. Uh, we've got this exact same wand right here already for kittens. I love the little fish because the, the, the way the little uh, ribbons on the end are. It's very, uh, it's festive. It looks like something you would see uh, waving at a parade, maybe. Okay. And now it is in there. Oh, these must be the tent stakes. Yes, these are the stakes for the, to, to stake that thing down when you put it in the yard. It comes with a little bag of stakes, too. How about that? Not the kind you can eat. Don't look excited, buddy. It's the kind you use to kill a vampire. So, yeah, you know where to go if we got that problem. Okay, uh, well, I'm going to turn off this mic. I'm going to turn on the regular mic. That way I don't forget. I'm going to get all this stuff put away. I'm going to say thank you one more time. I'm going to solve this little puzzle toy. I think I got a pretty good idea how it works already, though. It's just going to be a question of figuring out uh, why the one end is cut shorter and how to arrange them so that that is correct. Oh, because, yeah, that's why. Because it does make, see, look at that. I can do it right here now. My, no, kind of? Yes, no, exactly. Because it makes, that's why we've got two of them. It makes two triangles like this, two V shapes. That's why the cutout. And then these are the other, like this, see? Uh-huh, uh-huh. He's got it after all. There you go. Picture it like this. And then I suppose you could put this the same way. You could put it a different way too, but this probably is going to do the... There we go. And the ball's probably got to go on the end one rather than on one of the sides. You could do it either way. Probably looks cooler if you put it on one of the ends, doesn't it, here? Well, mystery solved. Now I just have to get to work on it. Hmm. Except uh, I have the, um, the, the electric screwdriver. It just happens to be out in my office because I've been doing a lot of stuff in there. So I'll save myself the extra wrist work there. Okay, uh, Mike. Catch that thing, buddy. I'm glad to get away from you. Don't give up. Custard, you look like a big old frog. A big old bullfrog.
What are you looking at, Quid? You're gonna be that way someday too, pal. Don't judge me. Time comes for us all, buddy. How's that for a thought? Yeah, that's how I feel. Okay, look out. Here we go, right here. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, no need to panic. I'm coming through.
Goats, look out. Back up. Back, 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 back. Hey, I'm coming in. Okay. I'm going to put this in the trash, okay? There we go, right there. Bill, you are so tired out, pal. What's up? Your worms are farting? How about you guys? How are your worms doing, huh? Good? They all evicted yet? Kicking them out, you know. Bye. Oh, the balloons just gonna leave the room anytime she wants. Zooms, the balloon zooms. Right out the room. Yeah, I know. All you want to do it. Hey, what are you doing? No, keep going. Stop it. What are you doing, kids? Custard, you don't need this. You of all people, buddy. Why don't you go have one of your new hair ties instead? Yeah. Okay, you and me both don't need this. Get, 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 hey, get, get. Now that's this way, buddy. Come on. Who else are we missing? I see three kittens. At least one, two, three, four. I just don't see farthing, huh? <sighs> That's why they don't call in here. Okay, well, I'm going to go find Farthing, but I am going to wrap up the archive here. So if you're watching live, keep doing it. But if you're not, start doing it.